Hello and welcome to NAFIS April edition of the Advisor Ambassador Program. My name is Zach Hules and I work in the Membership and Marketing Department at the NAFA Home Office. Today our host is Mark from NAFA Missouri. Mark is a past president of NAFA Missouri and a past Young Advisor Leader of the Year as well. Mark will be presenting Build Your Professional Network of Mentors and Industry Colleagues. Presentation, if all attendees can mute their lines, please, and post any questions they have or comments in the chat board as we monitor it. We'll maybe have some time for some Q&A at the conclusion of the presentation. So, thank you, everyone, Mark, and just one more reminder to mute your lines if you can. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Zach, for, uh, for hosting today. Um, again, like Zach said, I'm Mark. Um, I want to first uh, tell you we're going to talk today about building your professional network and mentor mentors and industry colleagues and ways to do that. But first, I want to take some time to talk about the awesome people who put this thing on and, and I want to recognize Zach uh, being a native Missourian himself. I'm proud of him for, for doing what he's doing at NAFA National, as well as Emily, Ca Emily Cabbage and, and John Richardson, our, our current national YAT chair. They're doing a great job. and. And to see NAFA doing great things, uh, we're up 59% year over year in membership growth with 400 new members since quarter one. Uh, and so in quarter one. And uh, it's really because of people like Zach and Emily and our leaders in our national home office with the vision that they've created for NAFA and programs like this that are enabling us to, to, to carry on this mission and do a great job. So uh, thank you, Zach, again. I'm excited to be a part of this awesome group. So as we begin, I want to challenge you. I've sat in many meetings like, just like this one that have uh, either virtually or even, or even in person. And some meetings go well, right? And some meetings don't. Some I've walked out of and gone, man, that was a waste of my time. And some I've walked out of and gone, wow, that really challenged me. That really pushed me or moved me to do something different in my business or my personal life. Both of those two results could happen for you today, both of them. But it's all on you. Onus is not on me, just kidding. Um, but it, let's do this together. Let's, let's learn something today. Let's not think about those last appointments we've had today or the next few or what's for dinner tonight or how you made your spouse mad last night. Let's, talk, let's, let's work on our business and focus today on how we can build our professional network uh, today together. So here we go. We're going to go back a slide here. I, I had the wrong slide pulled up for you. But um, this picture here, just to give you a quick description of it, is a picture of uh, a few of my YAD brothers as well as a, a couple of pictures of our, come of some of our past presidents of NAFA National. It was quite the opportunity as we celebrated a wonderful, uh, wonderful night of, of in, uh, in our, in our, in Vegas actually for our national conference. Uh, but you see Jules Godreau there and Paul Doherty, two national presidents. And what's cool about that picture is that those four, those three, four of the brothers that I have in that picture are great, but knowing those two presidents uh, like I do, if I needed something from them right now, I know I'd call them today or text them today and they'd be right there for me. And because of our mentorship in our industry and our mentorship within NAFA, I have access to th those two guys and it's an amazing opportunity to lean on them. As we so um, someone doesn't know how to mute their phone. I'm thinking it's Paul Long and Paul's a great friend of mine. You'll hear about him here in a minute. So I'll call him out in front of everybody. Just kidding. Love you, Paul. So they asked me to talk about myself a little bit, which everyone loves to do if you're especially humble, like, especially humble like myself. But um, this slide shows something that's at the heart of who I am. Uh, the, a quote that really grabs me and motivates me is the quote that says, the absence of challenge degrades the human being. Uh, as you can see there uh, on your screen, I just recently in February summited Mount Kilimanjaro, the rooftop of Africa. It was quite the challenge. And uh, I take those challenges very seriously. When people challenge me to do things that maybe are outside of my comfort zone, um, I, do, I, I take them and run with them. And so when I did that, uh, it was just another step in my professional, personal development. And today you're going to be challenged to do some things maybe you're outside your comfort zone in building your professional network. On your left there, you'll see my beautiful family of, of Stephanie, my wife of 14 years and uh, nine months. She'd be happy with that number. Um, and my daughter, Brand, my son, sons, Maddox and Tobias, and they're really what drive me. They're also a challenge sometimes too, but they're what drive me to be the man that I am uh, personally. Uh, as far as my NAFA involvement is concerned, uh, I'm the current first vice chair of our National Political Involvement Committee. 
I'm a past national chair of our YAT Young Advisor Team Committee. I've been uh, the state president of Missouri, and I've also been the state president of NAFA Springfield. So I give you a little bit of history within uh, what I've done as a as a volunteer in our wonderful association that we serve. One of my favorite pictures of all time, these are uh, some of those same guys in that same picture earlier, but those guys have all won the YAT Leader of the Year Award, uh, just like I have when I won it in 2014. And my, uh, my brotherhood with them started in San Diego when I won my award, uh, meeting these guys for the first time and doing some really cool stuff together. But as you see there, we're in Washington, D.C., uh, celebrating uh, our congressional conference and the Washington Monu Monuments there in the back. But one thing I always learned uh, about our industry is a quote that says, smart people learn from mistakes, but wise ones learn from mistakes of others. And you can see there that there's a lot of mistakes that have been made amongst those group of guys. Uh, and so we take those type, of, to those type of opportunities to learn from each other. And we, uh, we formed a study group of a few of those guys and a few other people that are involved in NAFA and other places. And um, we spend, spend time every Friday sharpening each other. Uh, sometimes it's about our numbers and, and how we've done uh, in our, the, the metrics we set for ourselves. And sometimes it's just to talk about life and talk about our, our spouses or our kids and, and whatnot. But just recently, just two months ago, one of our guys in our group uh, came and said, hey, I'm considering a career change. And that's a big deal. And so he called me and he, we talked about it for about an hour and a half and found that, um, you know, we were there to lean on each other and, and talk, talk each other through that, that situation and help him um, make the right informed decision as brothers would to help him either learn to stay in the business or either to, to exit and, and how to do that. And so um, I would encourage you to find others that can help you learn from their mistakes. You don't have to make them yourself. This business is not about doing crazy new ideas every day. It's about doing a repeatable process. And we've been doing it for over 100 years. And so that's a very important piece of the puzzle when it comes to building your network. My first professional network that I ever built was within um, my Lilly group. Lilly stands for Leadership and Life Institute. And Lilly was made up of around nine people that all from Missouri, from different parts of Missouri, that came together to, at once, a, once a month, one day a month, to, to sharpen each other. We learned to build a business plan. We learned to, um, we learned to uh, sharpen ourselves in certain ways. We learned how our personality profile. We learned each other's personality profile. We learned different principles to help us in our business and our, as well as our personal life. Uh, that picture is a lady named Deb Coulter. She's currently the national uh, Lily chair uh, for NAFA National. Uh, and I'm honored to have become her friend over in, that, in that year in 2010. And she actually now works with me in my practice. So I'm a super blessed guy to have her on my team. Uh, but I want to teach you one principle that I learned from that professional network of people that came together once a month for six months. The first, the, the concept that really sticks with me every single day is to begin with the end in mind. It is a Stephen Covey principle. And that principle, simply put, is teaching us to, to start each day with what we want to be or what we want to do at the, at the end of our career. And with a focus on that. And the way they, they taught us to, to, to learn that is through writing our own eulogy for our funeral. Talk about a hard thing to do, right? We had to write it in the perspective of our spouse, our good friend, a coworker, and our children. And so in most of the, most of the cases, we're at 38 years old today, as Zach mentioned earlier, I'm not the guy that I want to be when I'm dead. Right? I have a lot of things, a lot of things more I want to accomplish in my life uh, as a professional as well as, per, as personally. And so the things I would hope my kids would say about me, I'm not quite doing right now. And so the concept uh, that made us write this eulogy, and we had to read it in front of our, our colleagues within our, our network of people in Lily. And quite the tear-jerking moments, right? And um, it really just taught me to, 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 to think about each day how I'm going to progress my day to make sure that my goals are accomplished. So my, my thought process now today, because of Lily and because of our professional network, is because, is, is, is just this. What will I do today to make sure that I'm the husband that my wife needs me to be, that I'm the father my kids need me to be, that I'm the colleague in my practice or in NAFA that I need to be to make my, my, my business grow or my association I love the most grow? 
what will I do to make sure that my today that my friends will all believe that I care about them and I'm there, there for them for whatever I whatever they need me for? A lot of the times people get into that rut of when I get my money right, I'll be better. I'll do this. I'll start saving for college. I'll start putting money in my IRA. When I have more time, I'll start working out. When my kids are out of school, we'll start spending more time with our spouse. Well, that's baloney. That's a Missouri term. That's baloney. It is all about what you can do today to make sure you are the person that you need to be in every aspect. Our business is very easy to get. You can get down on yourself in your business, right? You can get told no three or four times in a row, and your day can go in a, in a, in a poor way, right? But guess what the cool part about our business is? The next day is a new day, and you can change the trajectory of your week in just one day. So you go to bed each day, each night, and you wake up the next morning, and you reset. You reset. You get to say, okay, that day's over. That week's over. That month's over. That quarter's over. So what am I going to do today to make sure that I win each, each moment, to make sure that my trajectory is heading toward that long-range goal that you've set for yourself? beginning with the end in mind. Now, how does that apply to the professional network <laughs> that you're trying to build? A, you should take Lily. No matter what part of the, your career you're in, whether you're two days in or 25 years in, Lily will impact you in some professional or personal way. I promise. The books you read, the people you meet will make a big difference in your growth. Um, so joining Lily would be a great step, right? But begin today thinking about how you can build your network and find those people that are going to sharpen you on a daily basis to make you the person that you need to be. I got into business in 2005, and that picture there is a man named Mickey Tolliver. That's his lovely wife, Joyce Tolliver. But Mickey was the reason I got into the insurance business. He, uh, he convinced me to, to, to join his team. I interviewed at several places and identified him as the mentor I needed, needed in my life at that moment. Mickey, like I said, 34 years in the business, um, he taught me what gets measured gets done because of his mentorship. What gets measured gets done. He said, Mark, if you do this, this, and this, you'll make $84,000 your first year. So I just said, okay, that sounds good. It sounds easy. I'll do that, that, and that, and see it and watch it, watch it happen, right? And he showed me that $84,000 mark was what I was shooting for, and I, I was making seventeen three a year with my four-year degree from Missouri State University, go Bears, and, um, you know, 17 three, and I thought I was gonna make 45 a year grand guaranteed with a four year degree, and that was not a that was not the truth, right? As some of us others have figured out. But the the long story short of it is, uh, I took the took the jump and took the plunge. I got married, went on my honeymoon, and two days later came back and got in the insurance business, and uh, never looked back. But I'll never forget. He asked me one week. He said, "Mark, I had a stellar week, and I just I was just blessed beyond measure to have him guiding and pushing me every day." Um, because he's been so successful, and he, I, he expected success, and I gave it, I gave the, my, gave it my all as well. But he's, I made six thousand dollars one week, and it, it wasn't all roses, right? It was tough. But I made six grand one week, and he said, "Hey, how many dials did you make to get that six thousand dollars in commissions? How many appointments did you set? How many people did you see? How many policies did you sell? Right? That started my my trek in understanding the importance of measuring your numbers. So in two thousand five, I knew that I could make thirty dollars in one hour cold calling businesses. Two thirds would answer, 15% or so would give me an appointment, three appointments per hour, and my goal was 15 appointments per week. I knew that if I set 15 appointments per week, I would see 12 because people have babies, people don't wanna see you after all, and they sometimes just cancel on you, right? My close percentage of people that I saw was, was 80%. So I was selling 8.7 policies per week. Now, before I get into my numbers, I set two goals for myself year, year one. When I first got in the business, he taught me to set goals. My first goal was to, at some point in my life, retire and be able to call myself a millionaire. I came from nothing. My mom made $4.12 an hour when I was six years old, and she had, had two younger sisters, and my dad had left, left the home. And so I came, you know, from not a lot of money. So money was the easiest thing to measure for me. It's not about the money, right? It's about taking care of our clients and the right thing every time, and that money usually follows. Um, so... Million, to be a millionaire was a big far fetch for me. That was the, sometime in my career being a millionaire was my first goal. Number two was at some point before, before I was 35 years old, I was 25 when I started, I would need, I, I want to make $100,000 and be a six figure income earner and be in the top 1% of wage earners in America, right? That was one of my goals. Well, year one, because of my mentorship and him pushing me to be accountable to my numbers, I made $147,495 my first year, which was, $2,826 per week, 
$565 per day, which equal out to be $9.42 per dial. So he would always joke and be like, hey, Mark, how much, how many dials would you make if I paid you $9.42 a dial? And my response was always, as many as you let me, right? But that's how it works. And so I started measuring numbers very early in my career. Later on in life, I met a man named Paul Long. Paul's on this call, so I'll be nice to Paul. And I won't say much about him in a, in a bad way. But in the year, 2000, the year 2019, Paul's pushed me to different limits. I was comfortable growing the business, had a great team of people on our team, and doing just fine. And uh, Paul and I met through me moderating a, a Lily, uh, I'm sorry, a Life Underwriting Training Council fellow, a UTCF class. I met him several years ago, and we hit it off. We had similar likes and dislikes, both awesome. <laughs> We're both awesome guys, humble as well, both really good looking. Uh, just kidding. Paul is, not me. But um, no, we both had very light minds, and we, we just kind of kind of fell together a little bit and started re realizing that the importance of having each other in our lives. And so we set a goal that we'd make a million bucks in one year, right? A million bucks. And for me, guys, as, you can, you know, as you've heard, a million dollars a year is, is crazy, but we set it. And so I worked it out, worked numbers backwards and said, hey, a million bucks a year is $83,333 a month, $19,230 per week. $3,846 per day. Now, we're not there yet, but I promise you with our team that we have built here at OneSource, we will get there because we're measuring numbers. I'm constantly looking at them and what I'm gonna do today to make sure we hit that $3,846 $3, mark every day. And it's mentors like Paul and Mickey who set that in place for me to be able to show me ways to be better in my business, to be better for our consumers throughout, the, throughout my career. So what's the challenge for you to, to take away from, for you from, from this point? It's that you need to find mentors like Paul and Mickey and Deb. You need to find mentors that are going to sharpen you and they're going to push you harder than you're comfortable with, right? You need to get involved in, in networking groups like, with, that, like, that, like Lily and make sure that you're doing those things on a constant basis and putting parameters in place to make sure you know if you won quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. And if you won 2017 or 2019, whatever year we're in, uh, throughout the years you're in, you need to make sure you're doing the right things to make sure you know your numbers. And if you're not hitting the, the marks you need to hit, you make adjustments, right? Or you push yourself harder, right? To make sure you hit your goals and know whether you've won or lost. One of the biggest misconceptions in, in, in Nathan membership, I believe, is that we, we view ourselves as competitors all too often, right? We're not competitors. My brothers in Minnesota and Tennessee and New York and Texas and California and all over the country, they're not competitors, they're colleagues. We're on the same team serving Main Street USA, right? Trying to grow our practices, but help the consumer, the average consumer in America learn to either save for retirement, plan for retirement, save money on their insurance, uh, provide stability and in income, provide financial stability if something were to happen to someone in the event of an untimely death, right? We do great things for America, and we work together to do those things. And joining NAFA allows us to sharpen each other uh, all over the country and get ideas like, like Paul's given me. I've gotten so many ideas from Paul in the past several years that have changed the way I do business. And you too can do the same, and I challenge you to find people just like that. So one of the hard parts of forming a networking group is not just finding the next Paul Long or Mickey Tolliver or Jennifer Hodges or the people that are in my circle of people that I really rely on, but it's what do we do when we've identified that we have like minds we wanna grow. So I found one of the best ways to do it is through a book called Traction. It's right here on my desk. I can tell you I have read this book. I have many other books I've not read, but this book's amazing. This book will give you a guideline to how you can, how you can form your networking group. So the easy practice is this. You take a chapter a week and you read the chapter and you, you start applying it to your business. The first week it, te it teaches you how to write your mission statement, your vision statement. And so you have to set forth your mission statement to, to make sure that, um, that you're, on, you're on the right track. I mentioned a little bit ago, Lily. And I'll go back to that real quick because it's, it's an important point. Lily changed my business. I realized in, my, in that time period, I, I had gone backwards a bit in my business plan. My business plan was not working. And so, so through Lily and reading those books that we were in, I completely remodeled my business in the, in the first three years. Started from scratch, had nothing, no clients, 
and Lily made me rethink what I was doing. And if it wasn't for Lily, I don't know that I'd be in the business today, to be honest. And so um, I want to give that one shout out because Lily is, is very, very important. But Traction does the same. I've changed my business because of Traction. There's, there's things in this book that teaches you to learn more about your business and take a deeper dive into it. So much, so often we spend a lot of time on the surface trying to um, really just get through the day, right? Get through our clients, get through our meetings and that. And traction makes you step aside and take the, the 20,000 foot view and look down your business as if you weren't a part of it and really dig deep into your business and constantly work to, to tweak a few things to change the way things are done. And traction would be a great way to do that for your business, but also for your networking group, for you to take that group of people. We're going to read this book together, together, guys and girls. We're going to grow our business together and understand where we can go, where we can get better and where we can make some few modifications to make our, our, uh, our business is better. So to get started, identify like-minded people that, are, that look like you, act like you, think like you, even not look like you, might not be good for some of us, um, but find those people that care about you, their, their business like you do, right? And find people who want to commit to this, this endeavor together and use traction as a way to, to get that done. When I first got in NAFA, I was, like I said, a scratch agency. I uh, didn't really know much about the business, but I, uh, I've been in NAFA for about six months and uh, trying to figure out my way in the, in the independent world. And I was asked to serve on the board of NAFA, so on, on a committee. And I apologize for this fuzzy, fuzzy picture, but uh, Roy, this guy in the picture is Roy Kern. He's, um, he's been around a long time and he doesn't know how to take selfies or pictures that aren't fuzzy. So I couldn't get a good picture of Roy. And, uh, and so this is fuzzy, but I, it's perfect for Roy. So I was in a board meeting and Roy said, Mark, why did you join NAFA? And I said, well, I joined NAFA because I, I wanted to meet people who had done what I was trying to do on the independent world in the life and health insurance and, you know, retirement planning world. Uh, and I felt like NAFA could provide me ability to network with, with the right people, as well as, you know, learn to run my business better. My business acumen was terrible. All I could do was sell. I just wanted to sell insurance to a lot of people, but running a business is a lot different than just selling. And he said, no, see, NAFA is not about you making more money or more memories or mentorship or whatever you're talking about. It's about advocacy. It's advocacy. And I said, I said, politely, sir, with all due respect, if you didn't want my answer, you shouldn't have asked. Today, just kidding, of course. Today, Roy is a good friend. Roy sends me, Roy sends me books out of the blue to read and cards and keep it up, kid. You're going to be just fine. Uh, I call Roy almost every sin single time I uh, come in open enrollment for Medicare. He's written 8,500 insurance policies in his career. He's a tremendous resource, tremendous advocate, tremendous leader in NAFA, past leader. And Roy is a great friend of mine now to this day. Um, but he, he is the one who's leaned on me to teach me what NAFA is all about. And NAFA is about making more money. It's proven that NAFA members make 54% more money than people who are not NAFA members. It's proven that there's mentorship opportunities all across this country to be, have, have, have better mem mentors. It's proven that there's memories being made all across the country because we're members of NAFA. But I'll tell you, today, I'm the first vice chair of the National Political Involvement Committee. And you see me here in this picture with Billy Long, my congressman, one of the youngest, youngest um, House Representatives members in Congress, Jason Smith, been to, been to D.C. numerous times. And advocacy is an imp important part of what we do. We're the strongest pack in the country in the insurance and financial services side of things. And we're amazing at what we do. 127 years ago, we started this lobbying group to lobby for the consumer, lobby for you, the advisor. And it's super important what, what we do. And advocacy is important, but those other things just come along with it. So... I covered a lot of information. I could talk for hours to you guys, but I want to give you some time for some questions. Uh, and my guy here from the office would tell you this message here. So are there any questions I can answer for you? Feel free to unmute yourself if you have any questions or you can type them in the chat box. All right. All right. Easy enough. So as a, as a wrap up for you guys, in case you missed it, in case you weren't listening, you know, politely put, what are you doing daily to influence your end? What will you do today? Secondly, do you know if you've won each day, each week, each month, each quarter, each year? 
Are you in a professional network of individuals that are helping you grow your practice? And lastly, have you joined NAFA? Last slide, you can give a final virtual clap now. Everyone I can see just clap, make me feel better about my presentation. Thank you, Zach, thank you, sir. <laughs> just kidding. Um, I'll leave you with this. My grandpa told me this. There are three types of people in this world, three types. The first type of person is people who make it happen. They just make it happen. The second type of person is a person who lets things happen to them. And a third person is a person who goes, what the heck happened? Don't be the last two, be the first one and go make things happen in your business, build your professional network. Thank you for having me. I'm honored to be your host. Have a great rest of your week. Thanks so much, Mark. Yeah. You bet. Thanks, Mark.